All right. So now today's presentation is, is by Matt. Yeah. There we go. That's Matt. Say hi, Matt. All right. Yeah. And then we back to the screen. Good. All right. Uh, all right. Good. Is this so you can view it later? Or no, I'm gonna online? put it on YouTube so if oh, anybody wanted gosh. to see what Matt looked like. Was MGP. All right. So, well, you'll see. You know, there's PowerPoint, but I finally got around to messing with Magic Point. It's uh. It's pretty basic and simple, but it does presentations. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Anyone else used Magic Point before? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a first for everything. It, apparently, it's it's kind of old school, and it uses this nifty like text-based <coughs> configuration <coughs> language to define each slide. And they don't I look. This more you keep talking about it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's beauty. I mean, you, you can check it into a real version control system. And, uh, you, you know, it, it's great if you actually want to make slides that uh, convey information instead of fussing around with them all day long trying to make things look right. Because they don't look great. Anyway, they, they are fun, though. So, GNU Cache. Who here is familiar with GNU Cache? Who here uses GNU Cache? All right. Who here has taken Accounting 101? Okay, some people. All right, good. Welcome. So, GNU Cache is real accounting, uh, if you want that kind of thing. And uh, tonight, I'm going to uh, do just a very high-level presentation on GNU Cache. If you want to know more, uh, go look at GNU Cache's website or install it and start futzing around with it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you, you know, actually, you really don't need to. The GNU Cache documentation is awesome. And it will teach you everything you need to know to use GNU Cache and to kind of be a make-believe accountant. Um, you know, it'll teach you more than enough to get into trouble and more than enough to manage your own finances. So, there we go. Hmm. Everyone see that? Nice picture of Dylan there. That's not Dylan. <laughs> Does everyone know who that? Well, for those who Richard don't know, Stallman. that is Richard Stallman. RMS. Yeah, RMS. Father of all things GNU. I was looking for, you know, a picture of a GNU, and I found that picture and decided, wow, I needed that. So, anyway, GNU Cache. What does it do? Quickeny things. You know, you name it. Who here has used Quicken? Okay, some people. I have, you know, back in the 90s. I haven't touched it since. Uh, but yeah, it does the things that Quicken did back in the 90s. Probably they don't look as fancy, but... Did you use a 12-step program to get off of it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, I'm the kind of crazy guy who actually uses Quicken and enters every single transaction I make. Every single receipt I buy something with ends up in GNU Cash. And then when my bank statement comes, I, I spend a few minutes reconciling it with what's in GNU Cash. And, figure out what I got wrong. Uh, usually it's, it's at this point, you know, very few things are wrong. Also, uh, you know, I <coughs> frequently find stuff that uh, where banks screwed up or someone else screwed up. Like uh, last month, I had bought something or, or tr started to make a purchase with advanced auto parts back in August. And I discovered a pretty substantial uh, item on my credit card from advanced auto parts for something I had never purchased. Now, maybe I would have noticed had I just looked over my credit card statement. Maybe not. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's um, it's useful. I mean, I, I'm not sure it's really worth the time, frankly. Uh, if you, I figure out all of the hours I'm putting into doing this, it's kind of crazy. Uh, it, what is worth it is the reporting I get out of it, where I can actually answer questions like, where is my money going, particularly cash. I find this very helpful to answer that question come the end of the quarter or a year. Where'd my money go? Well, I, I know. And, you know. Now I know how I can potentially save money because I know how I spent it. So, 
you, GNU Cache will do quickeny things. You know, just about everything Quicken does that you would ever need, it will do. It will do all of your uh, investment tracking. Uh, it will, uh, you can import stuff from your bank if you want to use it that way. I don't. I enter all of my receipts, which is crazy. Uh, but you can download uh, the QIF file or QFX or whatever it's called, stuff from your bank and import it into Quicken. Um, or, or from your uh, stock portfolio company. I import it from there as well. Mm. So yeah, it'll do everything that uh, Quicken will do, but oh, so much more. So uh, double entry accounting. We have some accountants in here. I'm sorry, oh, yo, you want to actually see this. Yeah, well, yes. there you go. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, yeah, double entry accounting. Uh, so we have some accountant or some amateur accountants in here who have taken accounting 101. Uh, basically, it's kind of like a, a journaling file system, but for your finances. Uh, you don't just put entries into some category called credit card. What you do is you move money from your credit card account entry within GNU Cash oh, and move it into a expense account. So every single transaction touches two things. There is no uh, a transaction that only touches one. Everything, it, it, double entry doesn't mean double the work. It just means that it's listed in two different accounts. Move, money is moving from one place to another. There are accounting ways of talking about this with debits and credits. Frankly, even though I took Accounting 101, I often get that stuff wrong. And one of the things I love about GNU Cash is you can turn on the, the lingo where it will talk of things in debits and credits, but by default, it just uses plain English that makes sense to people who are not accountants and you know really understand that stuff. It's great. Um, it will natively handle multiple currencies and commodities. Uh, from what I've been reading online uh, during this presentation, uh, Quicken doesn't seem to do that, or it doesn't do it well. There's, like, you have to turn something on, and it sounds like kind of a kludge. Uh, this is built into GNU Cash. You uh, can, an account can have you know, be in pounds if you, you wanted that kind of thing. I don't know if anyone here is that sophisticated, but uh, it'll do that. Uh, you know, an account can also be shares of stock. And basically, as you, your, your transaction, in addition to including money, will include an exchange rate at the time of that transaction. Uh, yeah, another nerdy feature is, by default, it saves the files in a gzipped XML file. Uh, you can turn that off and save it in raw XML and then check it into your uh, versioning control system, you know, Git, Subversion, whatever you're using. So that's kind of cool. Uh, at least in theory, it'll do that more efficiently. About 15 years ago, I was actually using uh, GNU Cash to keep track of all my bonds. Mm -hmm. did a good job. Mm. Yes, it's been around a long time. Um, you know, I'm using it now for two years. I mean, I did use it a few years ago for a while and stopped. It is a lot of work. Well, back in the day, it used to crash a lot, didn't it? Yeah, on lots of things hardware. did. But n nowadays, it doesn't. Uh, on certain hardware. On certain hardware, but not, not necessarily. It did well, have stability my, issues. It's my complicated wonderful software. wonderful Pentium 2. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right, I mean, this is an old laptop. I'm going to run it later and show you a demo. Uh, works fine on this. It's a little sluggish starting up. Uh, even on more modern hardware, it's a little sluggish. But how often do you start it up? I mean, I keep it running all the time. I don't care. Um, yeah, so it's doing a curial accounting, which is related to double entry and all of this, quote, real accounting stuff. Uh, Quicken uses cash-based accounting. GNU Cash, while well, you can kind of wing it and sort of do cash-based accounting, it's really designed to do a curio, which means uh, accrual? Accrual. accrual. Yeah, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Yeah, that. Oh, that's that was cruel to say. It was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, it lets you transcend uh, your account balances and focus on when you commit to a purchase, which is handy. So 
You know, you might be, cash might be moving out of your credit card when you go pay your bill, mm. but you actually committed to the purchase when you agreed to buy that thing. And shouldn't the expense be listed on reports at that point in time? You know, what if you have a six month payment plan? Uh, while cash isn't leaving your uh, uh, account until maybe six months later, uh, you actually committed to purchase that thing at that particular time. With GNU Cash, you can have the reports represent all of that, and even though your bank shows more money, you actually as a whole have less, or you know, it, it, at least in terms of actual money. So yes, helps you. So you're talking about future debt. Planning well, future debt. current debt that you haven't paid yet. A liability. So yes. All your student loans. Are... Yeah, that too. Yeah, I mean, you can represent all of the loans and whatnot. Oh. Sure. We'll, we'll we'll get into that. So yes, it helps you transcend your. Uh, I'd like to transcend that. Well, that that's cut off on the bottom. That's too bad. That that's the floating gnu. It, it is. It's a nice little floating gnu. All right. So we, I guess I already talked about what double entry is. Yeah. Okay. This is the magic accounting equation. I don't want to bore you with this too much. But yeah, equity is your assets, less your liabilities. Uh, and then in the real world, this is just for a, a, a fixed point in time. You actually want uh, this whole income and expense thing because you're supposed to, with this system, represent money that's coming in to the closed system that we have over here. Hold on, can you touch this here? Oh, it's not working. Yeah, it's like no, oh, I have to plug something in? Yeah. Just that. Oh, mm. well, good luck yeah, with that one. He was probably working on mine. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know but if he's going to be somewhere yeah, on this work. antique. And there's one there. Mm. Sees it right away. It might work. No, maybe. But we, we don't really need it. We can move. So, um, yeah, in the real world, we're dealing with uh, money inflowing into your system. Yeah. Works. And outflowing into your system. Well, now it works. There we go. And and there's a pretty fix. The touch. Yeah, thank you. It just took a minute to see it. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. Uh, so th this picture actually comes from the GNU Cash documentation. And if you know this isn't making too much sense to you, you can read their uh, uh, documentation. That's that's been written by people that really know what they're talking about. They write the software. It's great. So. Demo. I'm going to just give you a quick uh, if Gnome ever wakes up here. Oh, I know what's going on. Oh, really? This silly software, you have to give it this. There we go. Oh, there we go. Ah, screw this. Quick and easy. Well, that's well put, you know? We all knew just exactly what you meant. Mm -hmm. All right, so GNU Cash is closed this. As you can see on this antique piece of hardware, it takes a little bit of time to start, but not that bad. It's reasonably fast, sort of. Checking finance score. Oops. Yeah, yeah. All right. And the first time you run it, well, you won't get that error message. You know, you won't see much. But I went looking for demo files. I guess there are some, but it's so easy with this that you can just create your own accounting structure with whatever you want. So that's what we're <laughs> going to do here. We want U.S. dollars and. Here we have the default accounts. Mm, common accounts. Oh, good. Yeah, that makes it easy. Yeah. And it has some other options over here if you, you want to do things that are more fancy. Uh, it's got accounts for a car loan, some other things in there, investments. But you know what? Just for this demo here, we're just going to go with the common ones. And let's see. Click forward. Sure. Let's go with the defaults. Hmm, that's good. And... All right. Hmm. 
So. Not doing too well. Closer. No, no, it's good. He's just out of debt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Non-debt right. and no assets. This yeah, is the way it starts. Yeah, yeah. So, here, for starters here, I just bought this thing of Coke. Oh. Oh. So, you can't buy any money. What? You have to put your uh, base. You're absolutely right. We're going to take care of that. So, if we go over to assets, okay, and, and also, if you, we, you recall before, there was that picture uh, with the inflow and the outflow, the assets and liabilities. You can see all of those things listed here. You know, expenses, income, assets, liability, and equity. So, uh, the documentation explains all of this. But in short, uh, I'm starting this new accounting system and presu presumably I'm bringing something into the picture here. So, I have this thing here called cash in my wallet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move money from my um, opening equity account into the wallet. Let's say I have $100 in my account. So we're going to open the account. I'm going to transfer it from equity. And again, all explained in the documentation. And if you start, oh, if you actually create an account yourself, a wizard kind of a thing will walk you through this. Hmm. So uh, $100 in my wallet. Good from opening equity, and now all of a sudden we have some money. If we go back to accounts, there we can see I now have $100 in assets. Oh boy, but notice there's also $100 li listed in equity because double entry, things happen in two places for everything. So, now that I've got my wallet here, I just bought a Coke. So, Coke, whoops, wow. whoops. whoa, that's not good. And you have this on video. Oh, yeah, Great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Coke purchase. And uh, this is going to be some kind of expense. That's going to double your YouTube hits. I'm yeah. sure. Jeez. Oh, Why should I put it in, a, in as a flag? <laughs> He's actually just taking cochlear. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You know what? Let's call this groceries. So. Yeah. Groceries, there we go. Expenses, and you know, here, here, here's our little drag down here. Uh, but if we start typing, groceries. There it is. There it is, Good. exactly. Cool. And we spent a dollar, bam. Now if we go back to accounts, now we see, and we minimize, we, we close this here. $99, look at that. There's no tax on Coke either, look at that. That's right. So. Mm -hmm. Now we have some, um, uh, a, a, another movement here. You know, again, everything touches two places. So, we work at 7-Eleven or something. No, you know what, we, we work someplace that pays us cash. What, what's a good uh, kind of employment? Saturday morning market. Huh? You work at Saturday morning market. Saturday morning market, they pay in cash? Sure do. Okay, we'll or pretend that's job. legal too. Huh? Or a barbershop. Barbershop paying cash? All right, that's good. So we're a barber. All right, and uh, we're paid a salary here at the end of the week. And uh, so uh, we're, we're going to put more go. cash in our wallet. Um, so let's see, asset, cash and wallet. Current assets, cash and wallet, OK. Income, we made five hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's it's not real good. Three hundred a week. It's okay. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll make it work with this. Not for a tech guy. Yeah, yeah that's okay. All right, so you, you get the basic idea. So things get more complicated if you have a credit card because a credit card, what is it? It's somebody else's money. It's not your wallet. It's borrowed money. Exactly. Or a yeah, pay. Hmm? liability. Yeah. A liability. Yeah. Exactly. So um, let's see. I'm going to go. You know that card machine has another swipe thing. So let's buy a um, another Coke with my credit card. Spelled right this time. That's good. All right, so 
and expenses, groceries, sure, whatever, and we're paying another dollar for that. All right, great. So that's that. But see, now we have cash that's moving, um, that just moved from our liability, our credit card, to an expense, just like uh, the money in our wallet, but at the end of the month, what do we have to do with the credit card? Pay it. So we're going to have another double entry transaction here that moves money from some kind of uh, cash account, probably a bank account, into our credit card account. Sure. Now what does this mean? Uh, the advantage of doing things this way is that regardless if I spent money uh, with cash or with credit card or whatever, the reporting I, I see always shows the expense when it happened, regardless when I actually paid cash. Quicken does this, I think, but th there are many situations where things get more complicated. Like for instance, what happens if I purchase uh, car insurance? If you know, I, you have a car uh, and and you buy car insurance for it, and, and let's say. Uh, you're a young whippersnapper with the, an expensive car uh, and you, maybe you got in an accident. So your insurance costs a fortune. Uh, in this state, we pay every six months. But, okay, so, so let's say, what does insurance run somebody who's been in an accident, who's uh, had this kind of issue? I don't know, what, like 1,500, two grand, something like that? 250 a month. <laughs> 250 a month. Okay, but so let's say you're one of these enterprising people who pays up front. You know, they, they don't go for the monthly option because oftentimes you get some kind of discount for doing that. Um, and, and some insurance companies actually afford you a substantial discount, like $100 off or close to it. So let's say you're that person. So if, if you pay up front for the six months, uh, you're, you're paying that expense or, or you're paying that bill at that time, but you, are you really getting that insurance service? It, you know, in January, if it provides you service until June, well, you know, you really don't want your reports to show this huge $1,500 blob in January when the actual value of this should be spread across all these months. Um, it really is an asset because, you know, let's say you don't like your insurance company uh, and, and two months into your policy you, you want to go with Geico or whatever. You two can cancel your policy, you get all the money back, See, you didn't really expense it. You didn't really spend that money, at least not all of it. You only spent this month's worth. So, with the GNU Cash and double entry, it's trivial to handle this situation. You uh, uh, move money, and you know what? Let's do an example here. So, I'm going to pay my credit card bill. I'm going to pay the, the uh, uh, insurance bill with my credit card. 